I was proposed to on a party bus on, on the brand. way uh -huh. on the way to a Chris Angel show in Vegas. <laughs> my parents were there. Todd's parents were there. My brothers and their wives were there. What's um, like, tell me like the moment, like, are you sitting there on the party bus? Like, and what happened? I'm okay. Party? I'm like, I, you know, I'm, I'm wearing the, the, the mom pants. jeans and the family. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, I'm like, if I don't get my engagement ring in Vegas, like Todd's going to be, have two black eyes. Okay. <laughs> Todd's going to get his, his ass whooped. By two black guys. By two black eyes. Yes. <laughs> and um, they were in the party bus, which was just in case he didn't do it. Uh, I like hired muscle to force them to do it. So I knew like I had a feeling that because all, all our family was coming that this was going to be the moment he was doing it. And I wanted I mean, I obviously would like as cheesy as possible. So I did get uh, no shade. Chris Angel, you are a little cheesy. But um, my manager is has a connect. And so I got my whole party into this Chris Angel show. And I was like, I was, I thought maybe like Chris Angel would come from the ceiling, reveal like his nipple ring was really an emerald <laughs> and proposed to me. But um, I guess Chris Angel was like, no proposals at my show. <laughs> he has like a policy about Yeah, proposal. he was like, he didn't want it in the vicinity, like on the, he didn't want it in the casino. Oh, was, did Ooh. his parents get divorced? Like, what's the issue? I, what's you the know, trauma? I don't know what the trauma is, but I did, we did go backstage and hang out with him and. And he congratulated, he knew it happened. He was happy, I guess it didn't happen in front of him. It would have been so embarrassing, honestly, if Chris Angel was there. Stop wasting your money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash trash Tuesday. That's rocketmoney.com slash trash Tuesday. Rocketmoney.com slash trash Tuesday. Go to drinksimplyspiked.com slash trash Tuesday to find out how to get your hands on Simply Spiked Lemonade and new Simply Spiked Peach. That's drinksimplyspiked.com slash trash Tuesday. Hi slugs, I'm on the road and I'm so excited to see you guys at my shows this month. I will be in Oxnard August 27th and then I'll be in Madison, Wisconsin September 14th through 16th and then September 28th DC and finally September 30th the Wilbur in Boston and then I will be in Chicago, San Diego, Detroit and so much more. Get tickets at estheronice.com. Yo, what up? It's me. Annie. I am on the road. I'm doing my Welcome to Anniewood tour. You can see me next in on the 27th. I will be in Calgary with Andrew Schultz at the Great Outdoors Comedy Festival. That's going to be so fun. I'll be in San Francisco at Cobb September 15th and 16th. I'll be in Austin, Texas, October 6th and 7th. La Jolla Comedy Store, October 13th and 14th. San Jose, Houston, Texas, and a lot more shows. Go to AnnieLetterman.com slash shows. I can't believe you weren't embarrassed in front of your family. Like to me, the thought of being proposed to in front of any other person is so humiliating. It, well, listen, it, there were humiliating elements to it, but there was a rage that filled me when I tell you what happened. <laughs> there was a rage that filled me that took over any emotions to the point where I did not even feel engaged till 24 <laughs> hours later because the rage was so real. <laughs> so Todd, so the stones are family stones. So it's a emerald from my great, great aunt. It's from the 1800s. It's like this like amazing thing my mom found. And then the diamonds around it are from Todd's mom's tennis bracelet. So we had all of these, these gems and, and I was, I had a, a friend, uh, I guess I, he wasn't that good of a friend. I thought he was a better friend. Uh, this guy who hangs out at the comedy store, who's a comic and Okay, well, I can stop you right there. Guy who hangs out at the comedy store. He's so dead to me. We just, <gasps> we dragged him on Anniewood. Like he's going down. Wait, what? His, why? his nickname is Heavy. It's like all of the signs were to not trust this person. I trusted him. He would always bring jewelry around. I don't know. I was like, Wait, I know we'll Heavy Heavy's from Toronto? Done. Wait, why? Heavy's the biggest piece of shit on earth. Fuck you, Heavy. <laughs> You're trash. I hate you. <laughs> I will um, say this, I never would have gone to him for jewelry. He, uh, 
He well, like bagel. upcharged us. By the way, there was like a there was like an initial charge. Then the, it all of a sudden got more expensive. He doesn't do any of it. I found out now once he screwed up the ring. Well, he's not so, a real jeweler. He just sources things. He just sources things and doesn't check them or ch- make sure that they were done correctly or anyway. So Todd on the party bus. I'm surprised because I think it's gonna happen at the Chris Angel show. So on the party bus we get on. It's perfect. It's so cheesy. It's like exactly how I want it. Todd's all nervous. He's like, well, "Will you be my?" Wife forever. He like said something so stupid. And um <laughs> and, and I'm like, like yes. <laughs> I'm like, yes. And then he hands her the ring. I'm like, you're supposed to put it on. Thank God he wasn't the one because he would have gotten the direction of the anger because I would have been looking at him. So I go to put it on and it doesn't fit over my the first knuckle of my ring finger. This fucking asshole did not resize the ring. When I gave it to him, it was a size four, it was a pinky ring. He never resized it. But you had paid to get it. We paid to resize it. He measured my finger. Todd double checked, made sure that he was like, had the sizes and everything. He just didn't do his job. You know, a little too late now, but we could have really used Nicholas Potash for this. Nick, you scumbag. (laughs) I blame you for this. No, but it was like, so it was a pinky ring, which is like. What if I had popped out and been like, it fits me. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, Todd. You were driving the car. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It was, I was so mad. So like the engagement (sighs) uh, video is like me getting engaged, being excited, going to put it on. And then I like look to camera, I'm like, fucking heavy (laughs) like it's just it's so crazy he also had been showing everyone the ring before i got it it was just like so unprofessional the whole thing was so annoying it was like thousands of dollars more than he said it was going to be for no reason nothing changed it was like and then when i text him about it he was like oh sorry your first engagement didn't go perfectly like i was like being some sort of like prima donna about a Uh -uh. deal we had made where he Uh -uh. had promised a to do a craft yeah. that he said he do, he does. And then it was, I don't do any of it. People's weight fluctuates. He told me that it was probably <laughs> weight gain that made it a pinky ring. I mean, I was so mad at I'm that. not the authority on ju- jewelry, but I did date a jeweler for like an extended period of he time. He did come on your back. It was like, was that guy. him? <laughs> she was no, like, was no, it? you didn't. <laughs> oh, sorry, my bad. We I, don't I miss you on my back. <laughs> um, but that is fucked up. Isn't that? that then is he goes, crazy. this happens to me once a year. I'm like, why would this happen to you once a year? What? And then he was trying to blame his like workers. I'm like, you are the person I trusted. You are the person I paid. You are the person. And by the way, I had to pay some of it because he upcharged it. Like Todd had it covered. And then I had to, he just ruined everything. Damn. But it was funny. He also didn't resize Todd's ring. He was supposed to resize Todd's ring. Wait, and why Todd's does ring, Todd have a ring? Because his dad's ring doesn't fit him anymore, so he gave him his ring. Oh, so Todd's been for the future. Because Todd's such a no, he just wears it. Yeah, Todd <gasps> wears a wedding ring. He's no, been like wearing it no for rings on months. men are so hot, like signet rings, or even when they have big, bold, like tourmaline rings. They're Isn't that so, so sexy. I love that you're engaged to Todd, but he's married to you. That's like, right. That's, that's a that. really good. That's, that's a good. <laughs> I mean, it's just a miracle I didn't propose to him. Yeah, I, and Was actually, that an I, I'm no, grateful not, that you no. didn't. I, I'm very against that. Thank That's you my not. one gender, like my my line in the sand. Okay, that might be my line in the sand too. You're I have friends. A lot of I have friends that my friend Brandon was or Brandon was proposed to by his wife, and I am like not okay with it. <laughs> what about like, sister? Well, now that you guys are so against it, I'm like, hmm, is there something What, for your next one? (laughs) No, for (laughs) when we re-up the engagement. (laughs) But I have to say, I know how you feel because when Dave proposed to me, the ring, it was too big and it didn't fit. And I was like, I I, like put a Band-Aid around it and wore it anyway, but I... I don't know. It does feel like you want it to be magical and perfect. Yeah. So I think it's probably really common, at least. I would have been OK with it being too big, though. Like, it's just I couldn't see what it looked like on the finger. Like, it didn't yeah, fit on, so like, sad. the finger yeah. it was supposed to go on. My dreams of having the perfect engagement ring are gone. Because of us? No, because <laughs> I am not dating a jeweler anymore. Yeah. Like, it would have been the best. He would have made it the fucking <coughs> He's a best. very unique jeweler, too. It would have been really... Like, y- yeah. In- well, I'll have him redo my ring because I want nothing. I want no heavy on my Absolutely ring. Absolutely go to Nick for that yeah. because also, he will make it the best. After we got engaged, like, so I had to get the ring size fixed. And so Dave worked with this jeweler that, like, he knew from college or whatever. And so we were both texting her. She didn't... She literally ghosted us. 10 days went by. I'm like, wow, this has actually never happened yeah. to me in my life. I've never just been dropped. And then after 10 days, so she- many times since then, yeah, <laughs> <I've been though. laughs> after 10 days, she's like, 
just got home from Burning Man. Sorry. We're like, <laughs> oh, thank God. Because I was so, and I yeah. was panicked. I was like, oh, my ring, like the jeweler abandoned it. Yeah. Us. I know. And you do want it back like immediately. Yeah. Like, you want it right. Well, Todd's parents are amazing. So my older brother and Todd's dad, like the minute this happened, it was, you know, seven o'clock at night. They were like on the phone calling jewelers, mm -hmm. like getting it fixed. It was so cute. So Todd's parents, we went to the mall to like a quick fix or whatever. And how perfect is that? I know. It's so sweet. But then, <laughs> it ended up being too big because the guy who like fixed it took so long to do it that Todd's parents were just sitting at this mall in Vegas for hours while the rest of the family was like partying and having fun and uh, waiting for the ring and it took so long and then the guy just made it two sizes bigger than he had measured I mean it's like jewelers are not good at their job I guess. Man. why is no, it so no, no. hard no he was late too and he did look like he had been raving the night before <laughs> I was like, dude, he only makes nipple rings. I was like. Now, when it happened, like literally when Todd was on his knee and you're on the party bus, like, were you, did you cry? Did you, were you overcome with emotions? Like. I was surprised. I didn't think I, I didn't think he was going to be able to surprise me because I had choreographed <laughs> so much of it, but I was really surprised by it. I'm really glad that Chris Angel hates love. Um... <laughs> <laughs> because it did, it was like, it was really cute. And he did it really fast, like right when we got on the party bus. Like Josh started putting music on. Josh Potter was with us. What song was playing? I don't remember. I thought it was like, celebrate. <laughs> I thought like Josh put on like a bar mitzvah. Like <laughs> Josh was so excited to be the DJ. It was so cute. He was like more excited than everyone when I got pr proposed to. We're like, who's going to be the DJ? And Todd goes, why don't you be the DJ, Josh? And Josh was like, yes. And I was like laughing at that when Todd proposed. Because I was like, oh, Josh is so happy. And was everyone like looking at you? <laughs> everyone had their cameras up. They were all so excited. Oh, my God. And then when I was pissed, everyone was trying to be like, it's fine, it's fine. But it's like on, on my pinky, it's not okay. I, it was not okay. I'm like, you don't understand. I literally paid this man. I looked him in the eye. I trusted him. He showed my manager goes, oh, your ring's so pretty. Oh, I haven't gotten my ring yet. Why are you? He goes, oh, have you showed it to me? Why are you showing people my ring before I get it? Yeah. Oh. And by the way, he's taking credit for it. This is the same design of the ring we gave him. It's that just different. So dive. personal. He designed nothing. Also, again, like Nick looks at my finger and yes. immediately he's like, you're a four and a half. Your and main finger's a four and a half? My ring finger is. I'm tiny. Well, I had a ring for you the other day. <laughs> we both could have married Todd. Yeah, we had our oh chance. God. Yeah, I um, you have tiny fingers too. Mine I are have, long, but they're slender. Yeah, slender, slenderman's hands. Slenderman. <laughs> um, I remember when when Dave proposed to me, he played the song Miley Cyrus "Adore You." That's really sweet. which was cute. Like we were driving to couples therapy. <laughs> it is so funny. He did it on the way to couples therapy. I know, and didn't cancel, so we had to pay the fee. But. <laughs> Like I he I just remember I was like sitting in the car and we were driving and then that song came on and I was like, what? And then I could see he was like going off course. <laughs> and but like, can I tell you the minute that song played, I got nervous. Like, I, yeah. did you feel that like awkward, shy, uncomfortable? I felt weird after we were engaged. Like I felt like. Ew, like, it's like, <laughs> yes. ew, it's like embarrassing to tell people you're engaged. Yes. It's like I watch Netflix shows with someone now forever. Like, it's like you don't know. It's like telling. I don't know. There's something like that's this it's like, like mine show sure offiness yeah. about it that you don't feel. I don't know. It's like I I was so happy to be engaged. I, I begged for it. But like there's something about that actual moment that is so uncomfortable. I the moment was good. The heavy thing. Is it an ick? The... <laughs> <laughs> when someone wants to marry you. Just yeah. saying fiance is so disgusting. It's like <laughs> the word fiance is so snobby and gross. Beyonce. And like and you and I every yeah. I have so many jokes about Todd. It's like boyfriend is cute. I like, know. Fiance is like, ugh. This has been my issue for five years. What do you think of husband? Husband's better. Yeah, husband's when someone better. says my wife, it it, it lands. With husband me. is really? way better. My husband. My yeah. husband. But isn't boyfriend cuter? Boyfriend's cute, but I'll I'll never have a boyfriend again. I want to go back to Dave being my boyfriend. Hi, yay! Hi, how's it going? Hi, I'm Kalila. Nice to meet you. Up. Yes. <laughs> I like your jeans. Is Robert here? Oh, cool. He can come in whenever. He's doing touch-ups. <laughs> He's a pretty boy. <laughs> Yeah, no, but there is, it is like, it's embarrassing. It's, it's like too much information. Wait, I want to know awkward. what that feeling is and should, 
I feel like a lot of girls probably feel this way, but no one talks about it because it's supposed to be the happiest moment. But I'm, I believe you guys. Okay. I can, I can almost feel what you're feeling it's and I've never been there. It's a feeling that I don't feel like I've had since childhood. <laughs> you it, know what it is? It's puberty. It's a transition. You're in a transitional period yes. that you're like, you're going through it in front of yeah. people. People are watching you like change into something else. Really? It's like vulnerable. It's like puberty, yeah. oh, Robert. Come Hello. On in. Hi. Yeah. Yes, come on in. Yes, sorry. Come on in. Hi. <laughs> Oh, mine are always wet. Do you sweat a lot? No, no he washed his hands. Oh. He was like, no, I have a I good say, comp. I have. Hi, sir. How are you? Good to see you. Don't get up. <laughs> Please get up. What are you doing? Wait, Esther no, Esther would on never in. get up. I could not I get up get in up. the middle of this. Please. Come no. on in. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're, you were standing in front of my camera. We needed you. Yeah, Esther's so <laughs> like, you're blocking. <laughs> we were just talking. about Amazon delivery for you guys. Can I join this? Yeah. Yes. Yes. We were just what talking about us? Annie getting engaged. <laughs> what did you order? Um, we ordered um, a chest plate for Esther to Ooh. give her pecs. Nice <laughs> a chest plate. Wait, welcome to the show, Robert Schwartzman. Are you, how do you feel right now? Are you overwhelmed? I feel really good. No, I, no. You do I, feel comfortable. I feel really happy. I want to stay here. Uh, yeah. Is stay? there a blanket or anything? <laughs> there is a blanket. Kalila has. Is there a seat warmer I could have or something? No, I feel great. I just feel like I don't want to say anything that I'm not supposed to say. Really? Me. Well, no, about. Like what? Just like Hollywood and stuff. Oh <laughs> yeah, you're fine. I don't know strikes. We're just angry. talking about um, Annie getting just... the ick when getting proposed to. Oh yeah. Oh, the feeling you got. Apparently, both yeah, Esther and Annie your... felt the ick. It's not an ick, but it's that. Well, being engaged is like embarrassed. I don't know. There's something embarrassing. Did you about when you we tell, tell us from the other? Tell us from the other perspective. I told Esther I would tell you anything. <laughs> oh, I love this. Anything. I um. Yeah, I'll tell you, you want to know my engagement story? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Um, so I um, I married my, uh, someone that I went to elementary school with. Oh. Yeah. So I was, we met in first grade. <laughs> and I, this is totally You're both true. In first I'm not grade. even, I just not, want to be this clear. is not this like is Hollywood rehearsed podcast. or anything like that. Yeah, no, I, we went, we grew up in Los Angeles together. It was a school called, um, UES, okay. which stands for University Elementary School. Oh my gosh, really a lot of pressure. Wow. A lot <laughs> no, of exactly. pressure. Yeah, I know. No, but it's uh, it, now, well, now it's called the lab school, which I don't know. Maybe that's, that's worse. I know, exactly. Yeah, well, because everyone's a yeah, test tube baby. Well, it's actually called, <laughs> seed, it was, it's called Seeds, S-E-E-S. Oh, yes, God, yes. even worse. It's all very, like, <laughs> embry yeah. embryonic. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. It sounds like a biotech I know, yeah. I know it's true, it's true. Well, it's weird because it was on the UCLA, so on the UCLA campus, al along the edge of it on Sunset Boulevard is an elementary school. It's a really good school. It's great. And um, Is it so good that, like, you can just stop there after yeah. elementary school? Yeah, You just exactly. get married, you find your wife, <laughs> your whole career. I shouldn't have said the name of the school, but no, it was, it was, it was, it's a great, anyway. I, you didn't I just say out. the name of the school, you just said all of shout the out. the school's <laughs> I know, ever had. True. I know, you can't, exactly, now you guys can all research this, but, so I'm, we met Zoe, my wife Zoe, which I, I love her. She's love such a talented photographer, and she's so beautiful, like, she's awesome. Thanks. Yeah, she's amazing, she's awesome. So we, yeah, so first grade, I'm one year above her, so we had mixed grades. So Ew. I know. <laughs> to, I think I, maybe I was second, she was in first grade, but we, so oh. we met at that school. You know, you have a lot of memories. I don't know if you guys feel this way, but when you're, you know, you have like visual memories of people you went to school with. Yeah. You know, you just yeah. like, you kind of know, if you close your eyes right now, you could see somebody, you, yeah. is that, that kid's out Michael, over there. Michael, yeah. That little bastard over there. Sorry. Yeah, Michael um, by cars, hip oh, weird. Shit. Yeah. Yes. Well, so what? we weird about hips. <laughs> you know, I'm weird about hips. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, tell me. I want to know. I don't even know what's going on. What is the hips thing? And he gets it. <laughs> Wait, my crown. Shit. My uh, tiara. Oh, yeah. We are in Princess Diaries. Oh, theme cool. For you. Yeah. Oh, that's Thank amazing. Because Robert was. You're our star. first prince. Yeah. You're Robert our first prince. Oh, you princess Diaries. You're our second prince. I'm that's sorry. A <laughs> frog prince. Oh, that's right so here. nice. Oh, cool. My crown. It's Esther's the before yeah. prince. Oh, You're the so after. Cool. Yeah, I really appreciate that. <laughs> when you kiss Esther, you turn it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Are your subscriptions draining your wallet, Esther? Yes, as a matter of fact, like I am subscribed to every streaming service. I don't use them. Like I 
have lost track. It's just, I sign up for everything so quickly, so easy yeah. on a whim. Well, here's a fun fact for you. The average person has around 12 paid subscriptions and they might not even remember subscribing to half of those. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, it's it's like, I have ADD, so I'm gonna, I'll do the the seven day trial and then I'm like, oh, I'll cancel this later. And then, you and, know. And they intentionally make it very difficult to mm -hmm. find the cancel button. Uh, um, but enter Rocket Money. It, Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Most people think they're spending $80 on their subscriptions, when in reality, the number is closer to $200. When you're signed up for so many things, like streaming services you use to watch one show or free trials for delivery you don't use, it's easy to lose track of what you're paying for. Oh, and Rocket Money, by the way, can even negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. It's not that they just cancel your unwanted subscriptions. They can lower your bills as well. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash trash Tuesday. That's rocketmoney.com slash trash Tuesday, rocketmoney.com slash trash Tuesday. You guys, it's been a really hot Muggy it's been summer. insane. No, it's not okay. This I don't is an feel inferno. good. And okay. what I have in my hand is not just any hard lemonade. Simply Spike Lemonade has been bringing the juiciness since launching last summer in four bold flavors that are perfect for any occasion. Pick up a variety pack to try each flavor, including signature lemonade, strawberry lemonade, blueberry lemonade, and watermelon lemonade. By popular demand, four fan favorite peach flavors are now also part of the Simply Spiked family. Signature peach, strawberry peach, kiwi peach, and mango peach. Which one are you? I'm kiwi peach. I'm signature. You guys, this is actually really, really tasty stuff. It smells it's so good. It's so refreshing on a hot day. Um, if you're out, if you're going to a summer party, this is the drink I think to bring. I have a friend who had a barbecue out in Marina Del Rey and I brought a case of the Simply Spiked Peach and people were so into it. They're like, oh my God, this is cute, fruity, cute cool girl vibes go to drink simply spike.com slash trash tuesday to find out how to get your hands on simply spiked lemonade and new simply spiked peach that's drink simply spiked.com slash trash tuesday flavored beer naturally flavored with other natural flavors simply spiked co milwaukee wisconsin celebrate responsibly simply spiked and simply spiked lemonade are trademarks of the simply orange juice company I'll, I'll, I'll wrap up my story really fast. No, 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 no just, you no, just started no, no. it. We could get into other good stuff. We're only in first grade. No, <laughs> Delilah just had Sorry, a weird I know, I moment. Know. <laughs> well, no, I'll, I'll, it's, you know, just to get through the story, basically, you know, we met at the school. You know, I grew up in Los Angeles, right? Zoe grew up in LA too, so we're both from LA. So you've been through that together? Yeah, we've been through LA <laughs> yeah. together. And we, um, so we have these memories of like UES, that school ended at sixth grade, then you go to like junior high. So we all went to different schools. So we kind of like, everyone goes their separate ways. So that's when I like didn't see Zoe again until we were like in our, you know, late twenties and we started dating. Were, you're like, were you that girl with the barrettes that I used to look at? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> no, she, you? no, I totally remember Zoe, I was, Zoe her name is Zoe Gross. And you recognized all, everybody her wants right it away? On Instagram and, Wait, but, did you have a crush on her in elementary school? Well, it's interesting. Like, I don't know if, if it, how what level of crush like yeah. one felt compared to how we crush now <laughs> but the no she she uh no but i just always remembered zoe and she had the same group of friends so i kind of remembered like you every you know social circles formed at that age so you kind of remember who was hanging with who yeah. and on the on the playground i played like kickball and zoe was playing handball we have these memories, Esther. So relax. That's so okay. Cute. No, but we. So <laughs> I. So I wanted to. I wanted to propose to Zoe, and I. And I. Well, first, this is what happened. We were. How long were you together? So we were, we were living. Well, we we were together for like two years, and then she moved in. What happened was we broke up temporarily. <gasps> yes, I had one of those freakout phases where, I had I had directed my first feature film. What and was I it called? Had, it was called Dreamland. Dreamland. Oh yeah. Check it out. And I felt like, oh wow, I'm like discovering a new part of myself, like creatively. And when you're on Did set, you feel a little like I'm gonna get some like 
director puss? <laughs> oh my god. Be honest. No, be honest. no, I know. What? No. Okay. No All right. Just <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Well, that's what I would think. I'd be like, what? oh shit. You would want no, director puss? I'm Annie Bonus Letterman. When I have success, <laughs> things get wet. Things are crazy. <laughs> things get wet. Things are possible. Possibilities happen. <laughs> Women around you are getting wet. When my special comes out, Todd better watch out. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, there it is. Right there. It's like five Dreamlands. Um, I'm oh, one of them. Cool poster. Isn't that great? It's beautiful. Uh, so, okay, so you're yeah. having this no, creative. So I made this movie. I kind of like was really overwhelmed. I got swept into that feeling of like being on set. You're with your crew. It's a family feeling, and you're just like, I think I felt, you know, my like my mom. I grew up with a mother who's an actress, right? And she's like a real intense artist. She's very like intense in a good way. Mm -hmm. But she's just like, Robert, you're me. You got to really focus. You got to like just everything. You got to like really throw yourself into this. It's your first feature. So I felt all this like these voices in my head making me feel a lot of pressure. And then I started like maybe kind of feeling overwhelmed, having balancing a relationship and then trying to make a movie mm -hmm. all in L.A. too. You're not like away on location yeah. checking out. So I was like trying to find a way to find harmony between work life and then personal life, which well, was hard. Can I interject here that that is a common thing, I feel like, especially that men experience that maybe we don't necessarily, which is like, if you are going to, t the tr if you're going by tradition of like taking on a wife, you do probably want to feel like more set in your career and not in this like beginning stage. So I can kind of see- yeah. Getting to the end of the story. No, we, this is a- We, the whole we want this story. Me. What if I don't even get to the- proposal? That's our well, goal. That's what the last episode <laughs> yeah. was just me telling oh, okay. one story. We don't want you time. to finish. <laughs> okay, good. Wait, but how old <laughs> were you? Woods. Yeah. Well, well, I, I spent a lot of my life doing music, playing in, I started a band called Rooney and I would tour as Rooney. I Which, by like the way, every years, cool like, guy I know is a fan of Rooney. Every oh, cool thanks. girl, really. Is a fan of Rooney. I just, yeah. I only know like Britney Spears music, so I wasn't aware. But I think that's a good thing if oh, I, I wasn't aware. I love it's this. R O yeah, no, oh, it's wrong spelling. Worry. It's no. R. <laughs> that's a R -O -O. cool version of it. R O O N E Y. Yeah, Honestly, -E -Y. the other Dreamland. Um, well, I love the zero. zero. <laughs> <laughs> that's my DJ spelling. Hey, are hey, are you an alien? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh my gosh, look uh, at this. Okay, so you had done music. You were born with the hair to do this too. Yeah. So you had to, you couldn't not. That's some on camera hair. Um, Very real. So I, uh, whoa, look at that. How cute. Um, yeah, so I was touring. <laughs> I spent a lot of time touring. I pushed pause. I wanted to like take a break from touring and making records and like direct a movie. So I was, I don't know, I was like 30, like, three or something i don't know yeah something like that but i like what whatever the, to long story short my personal life was kind of like feeling the pre like the i don't know be being close to somebody who was trying to figure out how to make a movie and all that pressure mm -hmm. so you know zoe was amazingly supportive during that time but i just unfairly i just had like a sort of panic at the end of it and we had like a breakup and she moved out and it was really sad. And we had a dog together that she, I remember her driving away with the dog. Zoe's listening right now. Zoe, her, <laughs> she in the future, she's listening. But yeah, it was like it was. Yeah, it was like really sudden and really hard. Mostly, I will say for her because <laughs> you she, were on set no, because she you were, no, 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 you were like she, doing the thing. No, because she moved out of a house oh, that yeah. shared. She had moved in and then moved out. And that was more more on her to have to and go, how long had you get a been new living place together? and all that's you have to you know, moving sucks right yeah and then there's a breakup so it's an emotional you piece move out yeah Whoa. but then but then i then i had this like panic of like why did i what did i do i made a big mistake i need to go back and fix this right so i started like and i saw i was with some family members who love zoe so much and we were all together and i like they were like where's zoe right now and i was like well we broke up and they couldn't believe what i had just said they were so upset that this had happened and that i had let whatever actions I had chosen to take led to this outcome. And they were like, this is a big mistake and you need to like fix this. And I was, I knew in my mind, I was like, yes, I, I screwed This up. is a rom-com. Like the whole family's yeah. like, all right, so we're going to plan this now. They're like driving. Well, it's so you nice because everyone really did like, really, really loved her so much. Yeah. So it was. We, and, they, and what family members? Because I know like this could be like Nicolas Cage, <laughs> Coppola, <laughs> like, because who? You really want to know? He, yeah. Well, no, I, I'll say literally Francis Coppola <laughs> told me you need to go back. And he, we were on our way to New York together. And he said, I know a guy who sells diamonds. 
in the diamond district. I know a guy that has a winery. Who like, you know, so they have people sell privately, like you buy a diamond, you have to you have to you have to set it and everything, but yeah. you can buy them separately. I know a guy. Yeah. We just that, talked about the guy that Annie used and she hates him. Covered that like, what you're wearing. <laughs> here. Um well anyway, so he said you need to go, um, call this man. It was very old school, like call this guy, go pick out a diamond, and then go you need to go back and propose to her. And and like not like for not forceful, this but is like, like this is like this awesome. is a movie family. Like and that's then, like a movie family. And then, like, let's it. go from breakup to engagement. And then yeah. when I was in New York, because you know when you go through, I mean, I was not feeling settled inside. Like I had, you know, I just it didn't feel. I had made this really quick decision. It was totally yeah. not thought through. The the breakup. So I was carrying with me this uncertain feeling of like unresolved tension of did I make a big mistake? So like so cinematic. How long were you guys? Yeah. I know this is really what. Oh, at that point. Yeah. Like two weeks. Now, when oh. you were in New York, was it's there so a subtle. girl, like a short girl, pretending to be shot by para paparazzi? <laughs> 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 well, so so I um, and then when I was on that trip, this is more it gets more movie like. But I was like yeah. with the family, with family and and my like my grandfather's brother, who's like in his late like he passed away, but he was in his like nineties, still married to the same his same marriage was it paul newman no <laughs> just gonna start but kidding. <laughs> but they were like this they're a sweet older couple who like live and breathe new york you would have them on the show if you like the very yeah. much like new york all the way forever and and they were like what are you doing go you gotta marry this girl she sounds like amazing and just don't like get in your head just do it like every you know she was just they were telling me you know you're overthinking all this stuff and like i told them why we broke up and it was just that this makes sense because that's the Italian yeah, side exactly. and you have the Jewish side yeah, of you exactly. that they don't it's know like about. Wrestling. Exactly. <laughs> but it was just nice to meet all these people that had like been married for so long and you could see it and you're like, yeah, what am I? You're right. God, I'm so stupid. So I like, I like at some point, I like I showed up at Zoe's place with like flowers or I'm not on Easter. I like brought her an Easter basket with like chocolates in it or something. And then I start every day I sent her breakfast on like Grubhub or something. And I think I sent her flowers like every day because she definitely would not take me back. <gasps> Good for her. She wouldn't. She did not take me back. And I had to really she 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 wanted me to fight for it. And she she was oh, every God. right. That was the right decision. And I tried. I just did everything I could to kind of like make sure she knew I was like Grubhub here, is trying. a great move, though. What kind every of day, breakfast? Grubhub, what, was it yeah. different breakfast every day or? I think it was, yeah, it was different every day. Yeah. Oh, that is Can't Grubhub the same is a... Yeah, no, 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 I know. I, was... then I, I definitely, wanted... she would have been like, who's like, I would have lost Popcorn. her if I sent her the same breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> breakfast burritos every day? Yeah, from different places. Lucky who boy, cold I am? <laughs> but I sent her flowers. I sent her desserts. I sent her whatever I could. And then I, I think I did look at diamonds. It's so stupid because I didn't, we weren't even back, but I looked at diamonds and like, I did some research and then, but this is where the story gets exciting. So I am so yeah, excited. Yeah, it's been good the entire time. <laughs> well, no, she wanted me to like take her, like to date, almost like date her again. So I like started, I took her out to dinner and like picked her up and like tried to be romantic and said, let's get dressed up. And I tried to make it like, you know, just try to like yeah. kind of win her back. And then eventually we started seeing each other again. And then to jump ahead, I was like, okay, I should, it's funny because I was like, I'm going to go. I, I Francis pumped me up to just like get a ring and just go back and do it like a movie, right? Yeah. Just get on your knees and just be like, I'm sorry, babe. Here's my ring. I, look. I know that proposal, you have to be on both knees. And then my, and then, <laughs> and then I had, I had a, I had a family member say, that's a terrible idea. She's like, don't do that. Who is she? She, Sophia Coppola. Yeah. Really? <laughs> this is fun. You keep guessing right though, but you have. Yeah, no, no. Help. Sophia said, don't do that. That's a terrible idea. I think you're really going to freak her out. And it's too, way too jer like herky jerky to just be like, let's break up, move out. And then, hey, babe, where's my ring? It won't feel, it won't carry what it should be, which is this authentic, like, this is the right time. I don't know, but I feel like Eyes Wide Shut really, like, delved yeah. into <laughs> marriage. And yeah. Yeah. That well, is so a good female director's so, point of view. So I didn't, But then so, suicide, uh, you know, sui uh, Virgin Suicides was, okay. <laughs> well, no, so I, so I took, that voice was in the back of my head and all these voices are in my head. Again, you can see voices are in my head. There's a theme. You're Herman's head. My mom's voice. <laughs> Yeah, it's like trying to get understand where is your voice in all this. But so I'm like, just I need to just take my time and like start to get back into like a rhythm together. So we started, so we got back together 
But it, there was always that feeling of like having to figure out this new patent, this, a new dynamic together after going through a breakup that was a little bit like well, did she, sudden and weird that it, yeah. Did you feel like she then kind of started to be like, I'm the director now? Like, you want me back? Like, Oh, to Zoe? Yeah. Um, yeah, she, no, she no. She's a photographer, so she probably I, is directing people. Well, she, she got her own place and she was totally set and she kind of, you know, she set up her life, you know? Yeah. And like I, it was weird to go to her place and see her new life. It was bizarre. And she, she was, you know, like she had put her, she had bought, she had found the pieces she needed to feel secure again. And then here I am coming back, the person who made life not secure. Yeah. Trying to then ask her to let's move back in together. That's that was so like a scary. huge no, no. Yeah. She was like, no, <laughs> she was, she said, no, I thought it was like on Valentine's Day or something. I thought I could romantically, like we could move <laughs> in together. You're like, I got you a card. <laughs> so I, so I did buy, I did buy a ring, right? Mm -hmm. I bought a ring. And I had um, thought of how I was going to propose. So what I was going to do was I was going to somehow get her back to elementary school. Aww. So I could propose on campus. That's cute. Right? Hard to get on elementary schools as a grown-up. Really kid. hard. Right. No, <laughs> so, I, it's a little so I, I try. So I emailed <laughs> Court them. orders, honestly. I, I was able to get the right person's contact. I emailed them, hi, we both went here. I want to propose to her here. <laughs> so I knew I so I knew there was how do I get her back there without knowing anything's up, right? So I had said to the school, can you email Zoe saying we re recently have done remodeling and we found old uh, papers and artwork and stuff that belonged to you when you were in school here. Would you please come pick it up or we will have to like dispose of it like by this date? Wait, I have a question. Was yeah. she disappointed when there wasn't her I old artwork? Because well, no, that so would be such a gold It's going to get really <laughs> yeah. wild. So. <laughs> So I so they were willing to send out this very like formal email. This is right? amazing. It was very official, and she got the email, and I knew they had sent it. And then I kind of I I was like, oh, I she didn't mention anything to me, and I thought she would certainly say something, but she doesn't like look at her phone all the time at all the emails, right? So she kind of missed the email. Oh no! And I was like, hey, I got this email from <laughs> UES too. Hey, did you get? And then she checks out. Oh my god, I got one too. And I was like, oh, we should go get these papers. We should go pick this stuff up. So she's like, oh, okay, good idea. So I, we like set the date to go get it. And then what I did was I went to an art store and I made like fake artwork <laughs> as if it was like from back in the day, like cra like paper, you know, like co yeah. paper and crayons and weird. Was it hard to make it like? I made, odd? yeah, yeah, it yeah. was. I literally made a packet of like fake kid artwork. <laughs> But in it were like baked sort of like poems about merit, like love. And I think I wrote like something, a poem in it. I, I wrote in like crayons. What, did you write it with like your Yeah, -dominant like that. Man? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then I left all this stuff there, like a packet of it at the school. And then it was all set. And then Zoe's like, oh, no, I, I she's a photographer, fashion photographer. Right. A shoot came up and I can't go on that day now. And I have to go to New York. And I had this feeling of, I got to do it. Like I had that voice of, got to go propose, you know, like, just do this. I had the ring and everything ready. So what we were, what happened was we weren't able to go to the school and, uh, and do the whole thing. Right. And it was all set. So I was, and then we had, a, we went to New York together and I was like, I, I, for some reason, I, I think I, I don't know why I felt like I have to propose now, like right away, like as if like something, you're gonna miss a flight or something. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was like, shit, uh, we're, the UES thing's not going to work out. But it was like, so that was so right. So I'm going to have to do it in New York. Right? Esther's, sorry. I, Esther's I, face. I, I can't believe the UES thing isn't happening. No, 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 no. Can I so still get proposed to The plot there? thickens. The plot thickens. <laughs> so we go to New York and I'm thinking to myself, okay, I've got to do this in New York. I'm this, I got Where do I do it that's like sentimental or something? So I'm like, how about Liberty Island? Like the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. What? That's right. I know exactly. A, <laughs> like a the tourist story. attraction. I know. So I'm like, you know, we our our like our relatives came through Ellis Island. You, the Statue Everybody's of Liberty. Did. I know. <laughs> I know. That's why it's so hacky. Uh, again, I was like, oh my god. I know. That's what, again. You know, we're gonna get back to it. So we go to New York together. I have the ring in the in the safe in the hotel room. Zoe has no idea, and I keep thinking to myself. Maybe like what I had been told, like, don't this could freak her out if it's too sudden. And then I started Googling like best ways to propose or like things to know when you this is really silly. But one of the things was like, don't make sure you sort of talk to your partner in advance or get some fee feedback 
on if she's ready or he, you know, like, is it the right time? Yeah. Right. So I started doing that the night before I was going to propose. I was like, so how are you feeling? And <laughs> da, 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 da. And she started picking up on this intense energy from me. <laughs> and she was like, look, if you're about to like do any, like if, if, if why are you asking me these questions? And like, it kind of gave me the vibe, like, don't do anything extreme right now. Sort of the yeah, vibe. Because it was very yeah, fresh, yeah. right? All this coming back. So I was like, oh, shit. Okay, so that was Alice Island. Head. She's thinking about Alice Island. Yeah, exactly. Like crying. She's All this crying. was in the back of my mind, right? <laughs> we go to Liberty Island. I like, I'm like, let's go to, this would be so fun. This is like where our relatives came. <laughs> so we walk in circles around Liberty Island. I'm holding the ring in my jacket pocket. There's like school kids running around because there's like tours going on. And I'm like, where am I going to drop on my knees and do this? I'm looking around. My hand is like shaking. <laughs> and then I have that doubt, that voice going, don't, she said like, don't do this right now. What am I doing? This is so stupid. So I did, I ended up, and she kept saying, why are you acting so weird? Like you're acting so weird. Cause I kept going, wow, isn't this like, amazing? Her. It's always so awesome. I kept <laughs> looking, I kept like walking around going, God, this is so beautiful. She's like look trolling at, you on your own. Like, wow, this is amazing. Like, look at this place. You know, at she's least, like, she's like, what? why did you know, bring exactly. me here? <laughs> she's like, what are you talking about? So I just, she's like, you're acting so weird. What's going on? I'm like, oh, it's just so, it's so sentimental being here. So anyway, long story short, I didn't do it. I was like, I can't do this right now. Yeah, woof, what a really. So I put the ring back in the box and I left it there. And I think maybe two and a half years passed by. Two years passed by. Two what? years? Yes, it's yes. like your, your because hair is different. Two year, different because like you know what happened? <laughs> we ended up, we what we ended up doing was we everything was, we were in a good spot. We ended up buying a house together in Echo Park. And that was like the beginning of this joint of like a partnership, right? It was the first act of a real like joint. Like this isn't she's living in my place. I'm living in her place. But let's get a place together. Mm -hmm. So that was the beginning of setting up these like roots together. And that's kind of created some great momentum. I think it was around maybe a year and a half, two years. The ring was in a bag in like a back room closet, hidden away. And it was so weird because in the back of my mind, I was like, man, I have this ring. What am like, I got, what is this going to happen? So I reset up the UES thing again. Aww. I had UES send a new email <laughs> saying, hey, we've postponed construction or whatever. The stuff is still here. <laughs> Come get it. I was texting with like the whoever was the contact there. Hey, we're on our way. Got her in the car. Got to UES. It was after hours. It was like sunset. It was like getting dark outside. We were the only ones there. We got knocked on talking the door. Oh, hey, come in. Oh, yeah. Let me go get your papers. Just take a take a. You guys are free to walk around. I'll be right back. You know, the woman working there said that she was all like set. So she disappears. And I'm like, we're like smiling. Isn't this amazing? Like, this is where we grew up. Oh, my God. Let's go for a while. I was like, let's go for a walk. This is so cool. So we went literally on like a little journey through walk down memory lane together, like hand in hand, oh. walking around the campus, reminiscing. Oh, my God, that's where that happened. Remember when we used to da da da. Right. And then we got to, I was like, where am I going to do this? I didn't think through like, where will I do it in the campus? I just wanted to get operation, get to UES. And then we did like a full circle and we landed where we used to take yearbook photos. Right. And I thought that was a good spot because we could, it, you know, we'll take, this is where I'll have the moment. And we have so many memories. I have yearbooks of us together in that spot, mm -hmm. in these yearbook photos. So yeah, that we got to that spot and then I like, yeah, dropped on my on one knee and said, will you marry me? And it was so surreal, but it was all so quick. And she was like, she looked at me, she's like, what? What? <laughs> she's like, wait, is it? Such what? a long game. She was so confused. <laughs> it was so jarring that it was like the whole setup to this point and like was so confusing. And then I, and then I think I said it again to make it really real. And then we, she said, yes, you know, took a selfie in that spot. And then we went over to my mom's house and I had had her dad show up there in advance. And then we walked in and I told he, he, he didn't know why, um, why he was going to be there. And then we told them and they were so excited. And it was, it was really, so that was it. Wow. Well, that's my, that's my whole podcast. That was episode. good. No, it was <laughs> good. Like super anyway, so it all came back around, you know, it was the right time and it all like it all hit at the right time. And what did she that. say when you told her that you were going to propose to her at? Oh, she was like, Ooh. she she was so happy. We waited and we got yeah. to this point and it felt so much stronger. And would it have been a no for her then at Alice Island? I probably would have been. Yeah. 
I think it would have just been like, wait, what are you doing? I'm not ready. This is too much. Let's like, get pizza. Why, why are you doing this all of a sudden? We just moved. Like, what is happening right yeah, now? Yeah, you just ate like, breakfast. You just got me breakfast. Like, this is manic. <laughs> but it was really, yeah, it was really, it was really, um, yes, it was really sweet. and. We have a friend, emotional. John DeWalt, who he proposed to his wife. And I think the first, definitely first time, maybe first two times, she said no. That's so Oh, funny. wow. But they have, like, kids now and they're good. How did, was it like an official proposal? Yeah. Like he actually got down on one? Yes. And then my childhood best friend, Christina, like she found out that her now husband was going to propose and she said, make it stop. And <laughs> yeah. like, oh, wow. no, which I cannot relate to at all. Cause the day I met Dave, I started my campaign to get married to him. So like, mm. I just don't understand people wanting to wait. I'm like, I yeah, yeah. The, um, um, yeah. Anyway, but think- no, it's, you know, it's. Yeah, it's but that's a real great practice of restraint. I like, like two years no yeah, 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 that yeah, ring yeah. sitting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then she couldn't believe the ring had been in like a bag. In the I can't believe she never found it. Yeah, I know. In every I, I kept single that would be so house. shitty to just find. Uh, that's like such a it's bummer. It's true. It was in my bag. And it was a bag she would never have opened. Oh, there isn't a bag I would never open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am in every <laughs> single crevice. Well, you know, there's going to be something rotting in the bag. Yeah, uh, something to clean out to throw out. Uh, um, I think that's ears. a good anyway. story about like the voices in your head, like yeah, using them yeah. as like a guide, but not letting right. them be the thing that because it's yeah. been the wrong control. Time. Your, yeah. yeah, exactly. And if your uncle is Francis Ford Coppola, like you don't have to do exactly what he yeah, says that's, yeah, exactly. right away. You can wait. <laughs> no, but see, I never I grew up like never thinking of marriage, Me never too. thinking of babies. I never yep. wanted it. It wasn't until I met Dave where I was like, I Almost like I didn't want to be with him if we weren't going to get married because I was so afraid of a breakup with him. Mm. Like I didn't even want to enjoy him unless I knew it would be forever, which is obviously anxious attachment. <laughs> um, Psychotic. Or like even anxious. Such a trooper, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> We're really proud of you. <laughs> yeah. And it's just so, yeah, looking back, it's obviously silly because he kind of had said like, just be patient in so many ways. Mm. He said that. And it's like, I couldn't, I I could not absorb that or trust that. At your show in New York that I was at. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You said we're engaged, but we're not going to get married or something. Is that true? Well, so we've been or engaged. We're, whole, we're postponing the. We've been engaged for five years. So I say I say like oh, I'm okay, engaged, okay. but it's been five years. So it's not looking good. Um, Got it. There's a long engagement. But it really is just that he wants to have a wedding and I don't. And like. Oh, that is. I think it's something else. Yeah. That's the thing. I think it's something else. I think it's you threaten the idea of having a dry wedding with no alcohol. <laughs> yeah. By the way, it's like Esther. That's so oh, such oh. a nightmare for everyone. I did when it's I was so younger. I did think if I were to have a wedding, I would want it to be dry and no alcohol. I think everyone should be like on the same plane. I field. could see you just being like <laughs> no no liquid at all. Just everyone having hot mouth. <laughs> no just like liquids. everyone just like suffering uh. through your wedding for some reason. <laughs> no liquids is so funny. <laughs> Have you have you guys gotten close to like, is there, yeah, is it like, is there, a, do you feel like it will, there will be something on the horizon, like a real I do. There, we keep getting close to like ideas of just like a really, just like moms and dads and siblings kind of thing. Yeah, but down. then I think about my family and I'm like, hmm. It's just, is it a big family? No, I'm thinking I'm literally just my mom, dad, sister, and her oh, kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm like just dealing with getting them all in the same room. Are you, do you think you're kind of like embarrassed the yes. way you were about the... It is like to just be like to to devote your love to someone in front of all of like my brothers. Yes, and we're not an affectionate family. Yeah. And like, I don't know, it just, I'm like nervous about it. Mm. Oh, that's what it is. There's you're a not nervous... Like physically close? Only with Dave. But not with my family. So you want to like go like I know one of Todd's friends got married at a UPS store, which is so gangster. <laughs> what? They just have people that can just marry you at a UPS store. I didn't know this. Okay. You can literally just go to a UPS. Like mm. there are options. They have notaries and <laughs> isn't that so funny? I'm like that is like gangster. <gasps> That's so ideal. Well, my parents were married in a courthouse in Chicago, and so I was thinking like by Mateo Lane's grandfather. I know is his grandfather still alive? I don't know. Because that would be pretty good if you could do the exact same thing. <laughs> but um, so we were talking about maybe doing a courthouse wedding. I don't and know. If not, just exhume. Exhume his grandfather. Dear yeah. Mateo Lane. Just have him attend, <laughs> you know, in a different way. <laughs> Can we exhume? You would, yeah, why don't you put it at a graveyard? 
that would be cool. I don't think Dave would be interested in that. I mean, it makes sense, but... We're not one of those couples where we have the same interests and can, like, do something eccentric. <laughs> like a Halloween wedding. What about, yeah. What, yeah. He likes playing poker. What about a Las Vegas wedding? I like that. Yeah. About, like, an Elvis chapel. I think, I think I'm think i definitely going to do that. That would be that. so fun. <laughs> so if you wanted twinsies... We can totally double Because I can't, like, I can't imagine not doing it in Vegas. I was thinking about that, but then I feel like a lot like Kourtney Kardashian. I know, but it's like in a little chapel. The yeah. reason everyone uh, does it. But I like a maybe a casino themed wedding. Yeah. Like make all my friends oh, yeah. dress up as blackjack dealers. And they give you cash. <laughs> they feed you like a slot. <laughs> um, <laughs> it won't be a dry wedding then. Yeah, you can't yeah, have a dry Come on. Or you could do dry. In Vegas, it would be even harder for everybody. Do you think the guests <laughs> no, would no. attend? They'd all have flasks. They'd be so drunk. When you try to make things dry, <laughs> people come in yeah. blacked out. Yeah. They pregame. I think, yeah, you're right. If you tell people no alcohol, people will show up already blacked out, I think. Yeah. That is it's like it's a 2 a.m. curfew um, thing. It's like you give you give 2 a.m. You cut people off. And so we double up at midnight. Like we take as many shots as possible because we know we only have till 2 a.m. I just think mm -hmm. I just think like the reason because I thought the same thing about Courtney's Kardashian's wedding for a second because Todd and I were always like we'll do like a kind of upscaled like Elvis thing but yeah, it's like yeah. the reason it's hacky is because it's the best right yeah. mm, I but like they have that. other there's other are there other themes maybe they probably have other themes in Vegas yeah. right you do whatever it doesn't have to just be Elvis yeah I know you don't You. I know you like Elvis you I, I would have said Chris <laughs> Angel but he, he could be Marilyn weddings. Monroe or something right <laughs> yeah it's just, an old just, Hollywood themed wedding just pick your character just get Trisha Paytas to dress up like Marilyn Monroe and do it that, you could have like an old mobster guy the, this all sounds like if I'm marrying myself I can do this <laughs> we should have you get kidnapped by a mobster a murder mystery wedding <laughs> I will do wait what kind of wedding did you have we had a so our wedding was after I don't I don't love going to weddings because I find them to be Dry. Just so <laughs> slow and like they're just so hard to sit through. Like when you go on a Friday and there's the rehearsal dinner. Yeah. And then because I've gone to some weddings where there's so many people who has to give a speech and you're there mm -hmm. you're like trying to eat, take a bite. And then someone makes a speech yeah. and then you have to uh -huh. put your stuff down and then another guy got and it's like. Three hours later, your food is like really old and yeah. falling apart. <laughs> but yeah, so usually it's rehearsal dinner. Saturday is like, you know, like the wedding day thing, ceremony, and then the dinner, and then Sunday farewell. But we thought, let's make Friday the wedding and just have what the rehearsal dinner group usually is will just be our wedding group, smaller. Mm. And then let's just have a party on Saturday. It's just, just invite oh. more people and just make it a reception to celebrate, oh, we got married. And then uh, goodbye brunch on Sunday when everybody's leaving, the family who flew in. So our wedding was real, uh, just in my mom's backyard. We Everybody just kind of like, we, we were on a tiny little riser. My brother married us and uh, we didn't do like long winded, you know, like uh, vows that were just on and on and on about declaring love in front of everyone. I, we just, we just, my brother Matthew worked in, we, he interviewed us before and we gave little lines about things we wanted to share and he kind of worked it into his speech. Oh, that's cute. But it was like a sweet, fun, just family, like long, to, just passing food around Italian style, like pa people passing pasta down the thing. It wasn't like overdone and like, you know what I mean? It felt really fun and grounded. Mm -hmm. Couple speeches. And then it's so funny though, on Saturday, I I like to set, I wanted to set it up. So I was kind of like, during the day it was really hot. So I was kind of setting up the backyard and making the areas where we'd all be hanging out. And I think I got really, like really tired and like dehydrated from setting up the party area. And then- I have a wedding you might like. <laughs> no, and then that night, and then, no, I it's fun to set it up. We kind of did it more DIY style and then we and then I didn't eat really any food because I was talking to everybody and then I people kept bringing me drinks because they were like oh, oh. This is fun. they were like oh I know how it is like it's so hard to get a drink I'll go get you a drink and they'd like come back with white wine someone appeared with like a tequila someone appeared with like a beer and like just like nervously drinking each thing a little bits <laughs> of it not eating food and then by the end of the night I like smoked a cigar with my friends at like two in the morning to say goodbye and I got, I laid in bed with Zoe and I had the spins mm -hmm. and I rolled over and threw up all over the ground <laughs> next to the bed. And she was like, oh my God, are you throwing up right now? <laughs> oh my God. 
And then I went, I like stumbled. I was like, so I felt so sick from not eating and drinking five types of alcohol and smoking a disgusting cigar. And then I like stumbled in and like threw a towel on the ground and then passed out. And then the next day on Sunday, I spent the whole day so nauseous. I couldn't even attend the brunch. <laughs> I, I loaded in the champagne bottles to the restaurant, Ooh. went up into the second floor and just laid on the couch the whole brunch <laughs> as people came upstairs and said goodbye to me. Oh, I like <laughs> While I was like curled up in a ball, just like, bye. And like someone brought me like some special drink to like juices to help cleanse. I threw up again at the restaurant. <laughs> it was so, that was, that's my fun, Zoe and I. If no. she were here, she would laugh because... I, I threw up on my wedding night. This party. would not well, happen. I enjoy being a wife now. This Sorry, would, babe, but that's what wife, love is. This would not happen at that's my what wedding. Love is you see you see everyone at this. Yeah, no, no they'd be exactly. there's gonna be puking at your wedding. <laughs> yeah. I know because there's no. It's not liquid. gonna have a good excuse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you just have people passing out from liquid, not having puking up there's gonna be garages. Yes. They're gonna be like, oh my god, is there water in the distance? <laughs> It'll be the one time in my life I do cocaine. Is that your wedding? Okay, I <laughs> oh my that. god, Esther's coke wedding. <laughs> It's finally Esther on ice. <laughs> Vegas, Vegas. Dream come true. So <laughs> quite Oh my God. Um, but Dave wants to get married soon, right? Yeah. He told me. Yeah. No, no well, He said, before you go on, make sure you let her know. <laughs> By the end of this episode, you're going to be married. But if he had it his way and you? he just took, if he took over the whole thing, would you be married this year? No, that's this whole facade. He wants you to do it. Is it because the strike's going on? He no, he. There's more time now. He hasn't taken you any. Should get married at the strike. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there you go. He hasn't taken any steps or any action, so I don't feel like it's that urgent to him. I don't think it's. Oh. Okay. I. <laughs> It will become urgent to me if my WGA health insurance runs out. So <laughs> <laughs> there might yeah. be something sooner than right, later. Right. We could get some money involved in Which health has, right. healthcare. It has always been my dream to get married for health insurance. And so I can finally. Wait a second. You know, we need to have, we need to give you like a walk to remember wedding where we make you seem sickly. Like you're in a hospital bed. <laughs> oh my God. We'll put like schwitz on you. A movie themed wedding. Where you're like, but don't you want to be in a hospital bed and everyone thinks you're sick and they come like, yes, say goodbye. Can we do that without a wedding? <laughs> Just like for fun? Yes. Um, is the theme today engagements and weddings? I, I guess Kind so. of. And well, he's got yeah. engaged as well. Oh, congrats. Thanks. Yeah, I got That's exciting. This week. It is exciting. Have you been talking about the, like, the wedding and everything? Sort of. It is right weird that everyone does like everyone's like their follow up question is that. And then I guess once you get married, they're like, when are you having kids? Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Stuff. It's like it's this immediate the next thing. Why do we do? Well, I froze my eggs and everyone's like, when are you going to have them? I'm like, I just froze them. Can mm. we discuss this over a mm. banana break? Yeah. And then get married. Oh, thank you. Sponsored Liz. by Chiquita. <laughs> I just, like, thank we might have gotten married in <laughs> Vegas, but we just want our nieces and nephews to be there. If all the they kids can, were there, we that'll be so it. fun for them. We, I got proposed to in Vegas, so and everyone was there, so it was That's like cool. almost like, should we just? Well, we gotta get that prenup going too. But <laughs> wait, are you going to? All right, come on. <laughs> <laughs> you bring your own pineapple for a banana break. Yeah, this is my new move. All right. That's cute. Uh, Who cut that for you? <laughs> Air one. <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, Annie. I was gonna be so proud of you for cutting it yourself. And you I do it. no. Can you cut, can anyone cut a pineapple? Yes. I feel like you need training. No, you can't. It's a lot. It is a lot. You There's have, a lot of room for error. Of, yeah. But it's very simple. It's very straightforward. You just have to pick out the eyes. You lose some, you just are going to lose some of the meat because you got to. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a little thing you can use to just pick out the eyes. What? Can you use just a normal knife? Mm -hmm. What do you mean to th pick out the eyes? Not like a normal, like a cheese knife. Pineapples have eyes. <laughs> do you Not know a butter mean like a cutting knife? Yeah. <laughs> Wait. We, can you pull up a pineapple real quick? Oh, it has that. eyes. If you, you mean those little open. things? Yeah. Those mm. little things. Okay. Can... Well, that just pulls the whole thing out. Mm. Oh, that's, that's awesome. You're wasting a lot of meat that, that way. That's awesome. How does that even work? I do like canned pineapple. Mm hmm God, is that good. Wait, Annie, tell us wedding. What's the conversation? Any details? There? I'm in shock. People are asking me. I'm like, this is so crazy. People ask right away, but. Are you excited? I am excited. I was saying to them before you got here that I hate saying fiance, so I think I want to get married mm. sooner than later. To get rid of that, that. Word. it's just like oh, uh. such a weird interim word. Mm. Um, I think it'll be easy. Todd and I always do things pretty easy. 
Yeah, we don't, what a hoity toity kind of word. We don't, huh? It's so annoying. Yeah. Mm. And you do, there is a demanded, like, congr- like thing. This is why I switched it. Now I say partner. And then people are like, what? No, partner is better. And partner yeah. was a struggle for me to, and partner confuses people. That's fun. The thing I don't understand, I mean, I get it, but I just have trouble with it, is the whole idea where I, when someone, when you stand and read your vows to somebody, or you read, like the idea of reading some some people memorize a speech or some people like wing it. Yeah. Or they'll pull out a piece of paper and read this like long speech. Yeah. But it's I find it so I mean, I really appreciate somebody's open b- ability to be vulnerable and emotional in this moment. But I also I find it like confusing at the same time because you spend all your time together. Usually you're like living together probably. Yeah. It's not like you haven't been together and you're you need to like disclose this to them. It is for the audience. Yeah, it's it's for fun, every yeah. it's like it's you're you are literally pres- you're performing yeah. for everyone here to like reiterate how emotion how deep your love is or something but or, it's not about everyone else it's about you. Or you are don't they, need to prove it to anybody. Or are they witnessing it. this promise you make? Right. Where you're like saying, I'm not going to cheat on you. I'm going to stay with you. It's and, like, oh, so I think and everyone's like there to hold you accountable. Well, there's like another yeah. like weird. It's like a thing that. about God. It's like yeah. you're saying well, this because the vows are religious, right? Yeah, because I think traditionally isn't the whole purpose well, not, of a wedding yeah. to be some form of like public declaration and like having yeah, witness yeah, yeah. bear. Right, you know right. I mean? In front of yeah, all well, there's the, the people, section. God. There's yeah. the section where you, you traditionally fall back into. Do you take this? you right you know that thing is that that's not your vows that's not the vows yeah the vows are a little bit vows are different i've always felt relatively uncomfortable listening to vows especially when especially if they're not funny right and you know that they're (laughs) they're trying to be yeah or they're just too emotional that they're not even getting the words out oh todd's gonna blow it yeah (laughs) did you talk about like not everyone does that does, is that something you see yourself? I'm just curious. Is that something you guys? We'll probably do something funny. It'll probably there'll probably be a beat behind it. It'll <laughs> rhyme. It'll be stupid. It'll be a lizard. Be very, there'll definitely be a lot of skinks. There's gonna be a lot of li- lizards. I just wonder. Off. It's weird because too like <laughs> skink fest. <laughs> it's funny, you know, Zoe, Zoe, who's listening. I love you, babe. <laughs> Zoe, give us a I tell watch. You much I, I tell you much I love her. We put our things on. She. Um, we love Zoe. We're fans. You, I wish she should just come on. Yeah, why am I even we, here right now? On. Should have had her on. <gasps> we can do an edit where we're just like you should snap cut between both there. of us. Yeah, the um, stories. But she, when we first met, like I think it took her time to realize, oh, you can meet, you can meet someone and have like a good relationship. I think she had been in oh. not good relationships where she didn't almost like trust. Yeah, like a little bit always like, are you like kind of one out, one in, one out kind of, are you, you know? And I always, I feel like I had to like, almost like it was like. She asked me this question one time we first met, we first got back together. It was like, do you think people could really be together like forever kind mm. of a question? And her own I th- doubt in that at times. This is before she finally let go and became, I think, what she really, her true self. Because she was, had been left over a feeling of being hurt in the past. Mm. Yeah. But, um, but, you know, there were like times where she would, I, like, would be very re- reactive to if I if I looked at her a certain way or said a certain thing like what did you mean by that or like mm. are you looking like what's wrong like or are you looking at me like you know like very almost like insecure about like hyper hypersensitive mm-hmm. to what I was saying when I didn't mean that so there's a lot of like no no I didn't mean that. like overly mm-hmm. explaining I can really relate to yeah. clarify yeah. like yeah. oh no I didn't mean yeah. that uh, yeah but like I could I just wonder if that there's that person is in a and it's not by the time we got married we had reached a new level of like of feeling at ease with each other yeah. but i wonder if someone's like if you if you wrote a whole thing out and you said it if anyone's ever felt like what did you mean by that when you said that or, yeah uh, like, like, yeah, 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 like, yeah, like oh. wait it didn't feel like you really like were giving me the love i really want like, <laughs> yeah like you yeah. Don't i could see that backfiring yeah exactly yeah, yeah. Like, i can really relate to her and yeah. anyway as like the way you describe her just being super mistrustful because she had only been in bad relationships like when i meet a great guy like i met an amazing yeah, like guy skeptical. recently. My first question is, is he great or is he a narcissist? Like I have mm. such mm. like, I'm like, am I, I, I almost just mistrust the situation waiting for the other shoe to drop 
Well, you oh, watch that woman's yeah, wow. YouTube videos too, so you're Dr. like Dr. Romani. So you're like hyper aware of narcissism. Yeah, so it's like, oh my god, like I have no complaints. This must be a red flag. Yeah, or am I being love bombed? Am I? Yeah, yeah like yeah, yeah. he's so amazing. Hmm. Oh, this is like I'm now. I'm freaking out. Like I'm looking for things. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'm now investigating. That's, yeah, that's tough. Yeah. And I feel I feel like that's a me issue. That's not a yeah, him right, issue. But I right. feel like I don't know a single woman who doesn't bring who who hasn't had this past yeah. of bad relationship. Then, then they they have to always be a little skeptical until they do find that trust. Yeah, be protective. Yeah, no, I'm not totally. I think that's common. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I'll see you guys later. <laughs> oh, uh, actually, Todd's here. We're gonna we Google that. <laughs> um, no, I think vows are weird. I went to my friend's wedding years ago. And he got divorced, so it's like I, when you like see someone go through, and you go, "What are the what are those vows?" <laughs> oh, was oh my god, know, yes! Know, oh no, I, I they had, had like a, a bicycle friend. wedding. They were like bike, they Dude, liked bikes, and they, they did, like, spent like, like, like bike jokes. This was the most obnoxious wedding I'd ever seen. Like it was a week long wedding, like maybe eight hundred people, a really big to do because they came from like two big families. This is in Asia. S divorced in six months. Really? Six months. No way. Like I, I Do just you know could what, not. Why, what happened? I, I, I don't. Ellis. I mean, I don't Ellis. know, yes, but I get out. Out. Back. No, oh, yeah, like he kidding. had a completely sec separate second family. What? No. What? Oh, oh, that's the whole. Th oh. That's the movie. That's Sorry. Crazy. Yeah. What was his job? And when he, when she confronted him and said, "Hey, he was not willing to." stop seeing her or to stop being a you know like oh he had a family he had another woman but she Where? didn't know about it obviously okay know. wait so i want to like merging of families but she really yeah. believed that they were in love family not just a, a another but he had children he had children i believe so That's what was his job that he was able to do that um, he is just an heir, like an heir. He is just a- Oh, just a rich guy. It's yeah, so rich, annoying yeah. that women can't have He's a, a secret second family. Because you'd see our pregnancies. Yeah, like that. I. It would just be so baller if some woman had a secret second family. Let's if she try. pulled that off. Let's do it. <laughs> I'll try my <laughs> best. <laughs> I don't wear baggier shirts, but <laughs> <laughs> To pull off a pregnant- Honestly, guys are so dumb. I could see it like easily happening. Yeah. They don't yeah. even look. Just be like, I have ascites. Yeah. There's some fluid shift in my belly and you know, I'm going through some autoimmune stuff. And, <laughs> but... and it's kicking. I don't know why it's kicking. <laughs> 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 and then and then the guy's like, are you pregnant? It's like, so you think I'm fat? And yeah, you exactly. Don't. Guys light. are so scared to say, like, are pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> to be, it'd be so funny to stand there with, like, full nine-month pregnant belly, and they're like, are you pregnant? And you're like, no. Do you still love, you guys still love your dog as much? No. Shut no, up. <laughs> oh, no, no, we it's have. different, though, right? Because they're not your baby anymore. Well, it, they baby. We, we, Zoe found a miniature schnauzer that was walking alone, like sniffing a tree by the 101 freeway a long time ago. And we took her and we fostered her and then kept her. Trixie is her name. Oh. And she was like our dog. And then when we would go on trips, she was a little skittish with kids. But and then she would stay with Zoe's dad. He would look after her, and like they became very tight. That's his best friend. And when we had our twins, because during COVID, Zoe got pregnant with some guy's baby. I don't know. <laughs> Somehow, I don't. Some know. It was so weird. She came you, home. Did you feel bad. awkward bringing it up? Or you like, on, like you a pregnant? yoga trip? <laughs> she yeah. So we were like, let's let's try, and then she got pregnant and happy baby. She but. got pregnant. Well, we waited a little bit in January. We found out in February. We found it on the table. There was two babies in there. Wow. She had a full breakdown because she was like, I don't think I can. She was That's really nervous to be pregnant too. once. With one kid, yeah. and she was like, she was like, had a full meltdown. Were you kind of really like sweet. psyched? Were you like, I was, ex yeah, because it was weird. Because at one point, I had made a comment, not being trying to be silly or something, but I was like, I put my head, I was like laying in bed together, and I was like, oh, I, what if there's two or something? I said something like that before we knew, and then we, and then I thought when the woman was like, oh, oh, like one baby and two, here's the other baby. We were like, what? It was, it was weird because I had this like feeling. Yeah. You were and like, then I was like, wait, is she messing with us? And Zoe's like, no, wait, what? And then looked at the screen and she's like, yeah. And then Zoe's like, oh, had a full pup meltdown. The woman's like hugging her, giving yeah. her tissues. Anyway, yeah, it's a nightmare. But yeah, but we, we, so we confirmed it and like a couple, like a month later, two months later. And then, and then COVID a month later, the world shuts down. And that was that time. Wow. Period. But she was, 
She was amazing. She carried both babies till full full term, mm. 38 weeks. And um, she was, I'll show you photos. Of the birth? We'll I've, put them up. It's on. No, I was kidding. I was kidding. Um, I've seen her stomach. It was really, yeah, it was wild. Yeah, and twins. There was two. Crazy. We had twins. We have wow. two boys, fraternal twins. Totally Aww, different. Look cute. totally different. Great. Totally different personalities. That's really awesome. fun. They're almost three. So it's getting wild. Do you yeah. guys I, now? I really cool. connect to your story and like parents of twins. I feel yeah. like I was connected to. Do My, you feel like, do you guys now feel like this cool relief that like, or does she feel or ever talk about like, okay, well, that's kind of cool. I got two done at once. Kind of. Yeah. Because, well, I think there's a, a, you know what happened? Like she, her mom got like, you know, she's very tight with her mom and her, she, her mom sort of like put it out in her head that she was having two girls. Hmm. And Zoe spends so much time, I think like with shooting women for fashion and like, she's very close to like a community of feeling connected to more of like female energy. Right. And, yeah. So when we found out we had two boys, she like she uh, she was so like, she's like, oh my god, what do I do? Two boys, I can't do this. I don't yeah. know how to do this. And then it was like, no, it's gonna be. Don't worry, babe. It's gonna be great. Yeah, <laughs> I got this. But um, but and then now we so we had two, and she couldn't be more like happy and yeah. like, connected to them. So, but we we always talk about like you know. What if we went tried again and had like a girl? It'd be like fun to have experience both sides of yeah. raising children of different. We froze embryos, my fiance and I, and they're all boys, and I'm like so bummed out. And he's you are he's happy. yeah. I want I, I would know want, that. I would definitely want girls. I just now I love my nephews. My nieces were first, and I like connected with them so much. And I'm, my twin brother's kid. I don't know. I just like I always like imagined. Like, I'm like a, like, you know. I know. I really, really would want a girl, too. Same. Yeah. But. But everyone who has a boy is so And happy. I love my nephew. It's like, they're so cute and they're so funny. And they seem, they're, I feel like girls and boys are easier and more difficult in different ways. Like, the boys are just so crazy. Like, they're just like mm -hmm. running around being insane, screaming all the time. And the girls are like very emotional. They were so emotional since they were so young and like. Like mm. just really feeling everything. It was like really intense always. Mm. But um We I have friends who have like, you know, two daughters. My mm -hmm. cousin has two daughters and and it's you always hear stories when like her kids became teenagers, yes. how hard it gets. I mean, that's wild. And then like it's always like you you hear you always hear stories of like both experiences and it's it each experience is so unique and subjective, but but um everything has challenges. Yeah. So. I feel like that's where my expertise would kick in. Just shitty teenagers, <laughs> shitty girl teenagers. Because I was a shitty girl teenager. I was shitty yeah. with my parents. So mm. I feel like it's like whatever tricks you have up your sleeve, I've done, bitch. Like But right, also right, right. I do yeah. think yeah. 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 I do think I felt like I was gonna get my comeuppance with that. Like I did just assume. But who knows if I end up having kids like naturally or with the embryos or mm. defrost doing nothing, giving them to Josh Potter to fix his eye. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, take the stem cells, Josh. <laughs> but um, you know, whatever whatever happens, happens. But I do think I thought I was gonna get like an yeah. evil girl that was gonna. Did like, you know that that's there's girl. like biological reasons why, like when you're a teenager, you start to like hate your parents. It's because when you once you're like through puberty and at like you could technically mate, you want to like get away from your parents did i show this video Wait, was, were, yeah it was yeah. The video. yeah because you're you're not supposed to like it's to it's to get away from inbreeding yeah so really? you like oh, leave wow. your village to you're supposed to find uh -huh. them like repulsive so, so it's like not your fault your if you're like a mm. mean teen yeah you're like you said it's so much cuter than that guy it's biology to be a mean teen <laughs> that's so wild and then or when you but the sad part is they're like, then around 25, when you're no longer in the peak <laughs> <laughs> of reproductive age group, you start to like your parents again. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. No, but yeah. if that were true, like we'd all still be hating our parents because we still need to mate. Mm. Um, hmm. Yeah, but what I was thinking about when my when my mom found out, the story of when my mom found out she was pregnant with twins was she already had my older brother who was two and a half at the time. And they just wanted to have two kids. And at the ultrasound... They said it was twins, and my dad was like, "Yes, like my sperm oh, wow. is strong." You know, my mom just started crying and was like yeah, devastated. That's hard. Yeah, it's a lot. Did you guys, either of you, have twins in the family? N not, not in the way that I think would have would have got us to this point. I not no because it just 
I mean, I think if we if Zoe had identical twins in her family, I think genetically, like the egg splitting, mm-hmm. I think that's where genetics maybe plays a part. I mean, I don't see how I could if I had twins in my family, how that has an effect on it. Really? Yeah, because it would be it's two eggs are f- fertilized at the same time. She right. two eggs are released. The very- woman has the eggs. Oh no, because <laughs> I have a friend who I think her I- like. Her, she's a twin, so her mom had her, and then her mom's brothers, all of three of them had twins. Oh wow! So and they're all fraternal. Wow! So I do think there is a genetic all natural. Yeah, not yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I know it's weird with IVF. I, you could just put like yeah, but you know it's so funny when we we didn't we took a while for us to find the OB that we used. We met so many people, and it was all through COVID, so it was all on Zooms. Yeah, wow. It was like all these Zoom. And by the way, I wasn't allowed into some of the just, doctors. That's right. Yeah. That's a, yeah, there was like, we we were nervous because we were like, oh man, what if Cedars doesn't let me go into the room and like she's having the kids? So luckily, by the time we did, we they were born, I was able to go. But I, I sat in so many sessions and in the car with with FaceTime on while Zoe was in the in her appointment. Oh, yeah. So bizarre. Like, I'll be outside, like parked outside in the car. So sad. But, um, but yeah, it's, we uh, every time we called an OB office, we were like, "Oh, yeah, my wife's pregnant with twins. Twins? Oh my god, amazing! <laughs> IVF." Uh-huh. It was always like, <laughs> "Yeah, no." And I say, "Oh no, natural, natural. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing." Especially in LA, like, I was like, like yeah. "What? What?" I didn't realize. I was like, "Oh, really? Cool." I didn't know it was such a thing that it was like to do that, yeah. but. Do you guys remember Nadia Suleiman, Octomom? Yes. Yes. You know, I was watching this thing on her, like, you know, what she's been up to. Like, she's a great mom, it mm. seems. Hmm. Like, her whole life revolves around, like, I don't know if you ever just seen her talk about her kids, but, like, she is on her shit. I know she got a lot of shit for doing this, but wow. I kind of want to have eight babies at once. That would be so cool. You As would have, like, you would. Have, they would have to split you from your neck <laughs> with your know, asshole it's... to get those babies out. <laughs> I mean, it's hard. You know, it's really hard. They'd have to gouge out the eyes. I, it's amazing <laughs> to have, you know, be able to raise eight at this eight babies at the same time. It's diaper changes, feeding is really. And hard. she had no father, right? It was all right. like sperm donor. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So weird. I mean, this is a different kind of breeding kink for sure. I mean, I have a breeding kink, but it does not look like this. It doesn't involve did like. Did she eight. try to get many? Is this what? Did she, was this like? Why yeah. eight, why did eight suddenly did she put eight eggs in? I think she put more eight and I think embryo? eight happened. I like oh, the one little, little ginger one. So yeah. cute. So she chose to have yeah. that many at the same time. Oh, look at the little redhead with blue eyes. She came out the same time as a tan mom. Wow. <laughs> a lot of weird moms. You were more of a tan mom. Girl. I was a tan I was a spray tan mom. <laughs> the kid with the red hair was just he was just photobombing. Yeah. <laughs> he's like he was just walking by he's a neighbor you see that um, <laughs> um vegan influencer who just passed away no from starvation but i was gonna say she was all excited oh. no because i thought you were gonna say that th- there was like this this um sperm bank or something came out with this information that like people won't accept sperm donations from, red, from redheads. redheads that's yeah. so crazy i know I it's been a while i think that that i i, I think they're re-accepting now because I think for a while there, they were like, let's hold off on the redheads. But you're not real. I get along with redheads because I feel like they've been through a lot. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, you guys have been through some shit. But I think if it's still uh, a business and no one you. is, you know. There's crazy. No one is asking for redhead. You have jizz, to have gone to college, right? too, I think, to. Are you talking about eggs, Esther, or sperm? Sperm. Yeah, that's right. Because yeah. I don't think women were going in there at that time asking, like, buying, um, you know, specifically, like, Man. jeans. For right, Jinji. Mean. That's why. Well, Robert, thank you so much. What? That's it. <laughs> what, 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 didn't someone die? Did I? Who are died? you kicking me off? Wait, what did I do? Well, no, Robert we're out of time. We got. Our- oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, the vegan. You don't want to make this she- a double episode. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have a double? I, mean, I didn't feel done. Annie, does this surprise? I got the though? signal. You guys are blaming me. I, I responded to the signal. We got the a ten red minutes light. Ago. Is the light on in the back? No, they they moved something over to know that we're at our time. Um, should we throw it to our sponsors, Chiquita Banana? <laughs> no, but Clyde, we should get it. That's a really good idea. <laughs> no, um, but thank you so much for being here. This was awesome. Thank you I'm so, so much. I'm so happy I'm here. Thank you. Guys thank you for so being much. vulnerable. You kind of gave us your vows in a weird way. You, you did the Thanks thing. We all got married today. Oh yeah. Thank you. No, I'm happy I'm great. here, and I, I was nice to be here, and yeah, and Esther, good to see you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> 
This is awesome. So what do we do now? Well, well guys, <laughs> we'll see you guys next week with a brand new episode and check out Robert on Instagram and Google him and see how fabulous he is. It's at Robert Schwartzman. Check it out. <laughs> check That's him. S-C-H-W-A-R-T-Z-M-A-N. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. All right, take care.